All right, guys, welcome YouTube. Here we are again. This is going to be one of our build projects. It's going to be a redstone project using, guess what? Skulk sensors. What you see is a shulk sensor. It is actually the new redstone project item, which I'm going to show you in a second what I've made. I've actually hidden a doorway in one of the mountains here. Uh, and it's going to be actually kind of fun to see. These are really easy to work with. I mean, basically, if you step anywhere near them, they activate. If you grab wool, you can make it so they don't activate. So, I mean, you can see this one's activating on me right here. I replace this with wool. Oops. And now it's not going to activate on me. Uh, that'll come in handy in just a minute. So don't forget to hit that like button, as well as catch me live on Twitch. Uh, and I hope you can follow me. And subscribe here on YouTube. So basically, uh, I've hidden a door somewhere here. And if any of you guys can figure out where it is, it'd be great. <laughs> But it's actually not that hard to figure out. Um, I've made it into a shulk sensor door. So it is automatic. There's no buttons, no nothing. You just literally push the thing around and it... Hmm. I think I lost it. Oh well. At some point I'm pretty sure I'll figure it out. Um... Ah, there it is. Oh. Hey look, no buttons at all. And then we just have to walk up to the door and rip. Now you're going to wonder where's the shulk sensor. The shulk sensor is right underneath these plants. That's my giveaway for where it is. I really don't need the plants, but for this demonstration, I'm using them. You can see them right down there. You don't need to have them open like I've got. I mean, you can literally put up some that like that and it's still send the sensor off so I mean you're literally hiding him now why doesn't it set off the sensor when I walk around it it's because of this point right here there's a single point where the shulk sensor act or the skulk sensor actually uh, detects without getting over anything else so you make the rest of your line off that and whenever someone steps on it or re reacts to it it'll set it off I actually think I've got to... Yeah. It's more like that. Because it's detecting me while I'm up here. Pretty cool, right? And that's how it works. Uh, we're going to go into the details of exactly how it works in just a second. But let me uh, take you down below. And maybe we'll actually run over to the flat map. You can see it's really decent. You see there's a lot of wool down here. Uh, let me take you over to the construction world and show you how it's done. All right, guys, we're back in our construction world. As you can see, this is a mock-up of the world. And where's the sensors? It's the blue flowers this time. That's right, just right here. And right there. So how this works is you have to have wool going up the sides. You don't need them, but it's rec I'd recommend it. Because it blocks the shulk sensor from getting detecting anywhere else of anybody breaking dirt around. Um, they literally have to break the dirt that's right above them because of the sensor or the wall. Just like that. And now they will literally only point up. They only need, what was it, one, two, three? One, two, three wool from their location in order to go get that one single point directly above them. I've got one on this side, one over here. You need seven blocks up. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the seventh one is your detection range, where it's going to detect someone's footsteps. Usually jumping is the best method. All right, from the shulk sensor, you want a repeater. Uh, I've tried this with redstone by itself. The shulk sensors have a tendency of not producing enough signal uh, that far away. But one repeater produces enough signal to get the entire contraption working, really. The, they send the signal through the wall. As you can see, uh, let me get this. Let me get some stone here. So they send the contraption through the wall, which activates the redstone on the other side. Same with the other side over here, which activates it. Most of these are set to four. Uh, this is just so to keep the signal strong. Uh, you don't really require these. But you can see if I didn't have that there, 
the problem is, is I've, I've tried to do this method with the Shulk sensors without the wall. And though it works most of the time, if you build it wrong, you can actually, uh, it'll set off, the pistons will set them off and just send the signal back and forth and it'll become a mess. <laughs> All right, but it sends it into the wall, which uh, there's an already an active redstone circuit here, uh, allowing the pistons to be activated at all times, as you can see. And then we use the slab method to get the redstone straight up. Instead of going in circles, we just go slab, 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 slab. With the redstone on top, it sends the signal all the way up. A couple blocks before, as you can see, I separated it into the lower pistons and the upper pistons. And I don't know, you, you may not notice this, these two blocks right here are actually on the pistons. So this is actually what it, you'll see, which makes it even harder for someone to figure out that your base is there. Um, obviously you want grass instead of stone right there. And, oops. There you go. See, like I said, this activates the piston down there. So if someone breaks this one, it's because I don't have the uh, wool active down there. If we uh, activate the wool, one, two, three, like that. And then we come up here. Apparently we need wool just a little bit higher than that. <laughs> okay, uh, let's try that. Yeah. Huh. All right, so I made a mistake. Apparently you need the wool that high uh, for it not to catch onto this blocks like right next to it. As you can see, these no longer affect it. <laughs> My mistake. Okay, as you can see, uh, any movement on top of these two squares sets it off, but nothing else sets it off. Um, I thought you needed just the three, but apparently you just need a little bit more uh, in order for not to activate. The wool around and below is it so it doesn't set off a signal if someone's like over here mining. Uh, it's not going to set off the signal. You can see I've used wool on the ground because I've had mobs walk through here and it... It's, yeah, I got to show you how it works. But because of the active redstone light lamp, the, the active redstone torch, the uh, repeater act turns it off, which turns off the pistons and opens the pathway. I mean, you could actually make it so there's a button activating to get you out, but if you're going to activate have it, you know, be one way, you might as well have it the other way. And voila. A hidden pathway no one will ever find. Because, I mean, it, you don't even need it here. You could make it, like, way up there and stuff. It's kind of cool. So that's the basic idea of how this works. Now, as for number two, I decided to see if I could make a wireless signal, which as you can tell, I've got it going up. And I step here and it sends us, whoops, I'll show you that as in a minute. As you can see, all the doors going up. Time set. Um, midnight. The signal goes sent off, which sends it all the way up. And we have ourselves a wireless signal going up, which is really nice. I've got a few redstone projects I'm planning to use this on, but haven't decided yet. Mainly I've just been testing. Now, what you're seeing on the side is I put a dispenser on the side of the three of these, that one, that one, and that one, and Every time they activate, they throw a snowball to see what the shulk sensor and how far away I can get the signal to go that way. As you can see, it goes pretty far out there. And that's a pretty good signal to get a secondary wireless signal going out there. The only problem is it's not renewable. Uh, I haven't figured that one out yet. I have been wondering if maybe I could add like a 
block to it. I, I think that's just going to do something else, but... Yeah, it just it didn't really activate anything. It just threw a block on the ground. <laughs> but it was a very interesting idea. Um, I can see several types of auto farms and auto auto type mechanisms. Uh, they can self activate themselves because I mean, you can see that I can get all the way up here. Um, if I get that dispenser and a repeater, we're using the same method we did with the lower area with that first area I showed you. We have a repeater directly off of it, so it gets a full signal. Then we're going to use wool. Uh, the reason we use wool is so it doesn't activate itself, uh, which I've had problems with. I mean, you can actually make a really nice redstone clock with these as they activate themselves uh, on occasion. And then we just toss in, I don't know, a stack of stone. I have a diamond. We'll just we have a bunch of diamond in there. All right. So now what we do is we're actually going to remove. <clears throat> Give it a second. It seems we're. Toss and diamonds clear out here. But you could use this some some sort of method to reset the clock, like make it into a weird wireless clock. I don't know. I it's it's an interesting idea, nothing I'm gonna use yet. Up there it should drop the block. And there's the block drop. And like I said, if we turn it over here to have um, let's add a door over here. All right, I use doors because it seems to be the easiest thing to set off the sensors. Now these are going to be in completely active. They're going to randomly activate everything. And you can see I don't want it to activate these right now. So I just put up some wall to block it. This is what happens if you add doors too close together with that wall. Anybody need a ran <laughs> random number generator? Is that this is this is what happens when it's too close? Um, but you can, in fact, lessen the impact. And then we got a section of it that is now not active. But I mean, that would be very interesting. You could probably make some really interesting displays with these. Can you imagine just having a display that just like activates like this, uh, depending on where the wall is pistoned into place using a, you know, redstone piston. You could put wall that activates. And it would be very interesting. I'd love to see what comes out of it. Anyway, the other idea that has been coming through my mind is, you know, a mob grinder. I haven't quite determined how this one's going to work yet because uh, I haven't actually built mob grinders in a little bit. But basically, a mob spawns and the water pushes it out. And it's going to be kind of random because, I mean, it does turn it on and off on its own. And there we go. It pushes you down into the hole. And that's pretty much what I got, guys. Hope you enjoy. And hope you follow and subscribe. And don't forget the like button. Have a good night, guys. Enjoy. <laughs>